Hey everyone, Jill here and welcome to Across the Nanoverse. Today I'm really excited to share a video all about battery C-rate. In this video, I'll describe what C-rate is, I'll give some examples of applications of C-rate, and then I'll end with the calculations. And with the calculations, I give a real calculation that I would use at my job for a theoretical battery design that I'm just going to make up today. And what I mean by at my job, I work as a lithium ion battery scientist. I also have a bonus for you, so watch to the end so you can get that bonus. Before I begin, I want to invite you to like this video and subscribe to my channel and click on that bell so that you're notified each time I post a video. So what is C-rate? C-rate is a measurement of the rate that the battery is charged or discharged relative to its maximum capacity. By charging or discharging a battery, what you're doing is either applying electric current to the battery to charge it up or you're taking electric current from that battery to discharge it and power something else. The higher the C-rate, the faster you're charging or discharging. It's like if you're filling up a bucket of water with an eye droplet or a pipette versus a fire hose. It's gonna take a long time to fill up a bucket of water with an eye droplet, but with a fire hose, it could be filled in a second. But it really depends on the size of the bucket, right? Or the capacity of the bucket. In this analogy, the pipette or the eye droplet would have a very low C rate and the fire hose would be representative of a high, fast C rate. A low C rate is like C over 100 and a fast C rate is like 10 C. And this number, the C over 100 or 10 C, relates to how many hours does it take to fill up the capacity of this bucket or fill up the capacity of a battery with electric current. C over 100 means that it takes 100 hours at that charge current rate to fill the battery up to its capacity, while 10C means that it takes one-tenth of an hour to fill up that bucket or battery. An application where you would need a high C rate is like in a power drill or a drone. You need a lot of power out of that battery in order to fly that drone or to drill into a wall <laughs> with that power drill. On the other hand, for a laptop battery, you don't necessarily need a lot of power out of the battery, but you need it to provide power over a long period of time. So you can use a slower C rate to discharge that laptop battery. For electric vehicles, the market is trending towards fast charge. You've probably heard it before because people like you and me want to be able to fill up our car with energy, right? Instead of gas in the same amount of time that it would take to fill up our gas tanks. This means we would need to fill up an entire car battery with energy in as little as five minutes. Now that requires a lot of current in comparison to that battery's capacity. So that means it would be a high C rate for fast charge. As a battery scientist and engineer, I'm developing electric vehicle batteries. And so when I'm choosing what the cell design is for those specific batteries, I need to pay attention to the application that I'm using it for and the range of C rates that an electric vehicle needs to operate. So like I said previously, electric vehicles need to be able to be charged fast, although slow charge is also okay. In addition, as you're driving the car, you know, you need to step on the, the gas pedal, the electric vehicle go pedal. What would you call that these days? I, I don't know, I've never even driven an electric vehicle before. But what I'm saying is a car needs to be able to discharge the battery or power the car at a bunch of different rates and also for charging the car, you need to be able to charge it at a fast rate or even as a slow rate if you wanna just charge slowly. <laughs> now developing batteries that can be fast charged for electric vehicles is an extreme technical challenge and companies like mine are working on that. This is because the faster you're charging the battery or the more electric current you're feeding into the battery to cause chemical reactions, this causes the cell to heat up. It can also, if you charge it too fast, cause lithium plating or even thermal runaway. Now lithium plating and thermal runaway can cause the battery to explode. It's hard to charge a battery fast without doing any damage to the battery at all. But as we are working on these developments in the technology, we're getting better and better making batteries that can withstand fast charge for its entire life cycle. Using the recommended or correct C rate for batteries is not just to prolong the life of a battery, but also for safety. 
Now you see what C-rate is and why it's so important. So let's get into the math and do the calculations to calculate the C-rate first. To calculate the C-rate, you need two parameters. You need the battery capacity and you need the current. And this could be either for charge or discharge. It doesn't matter. To calculate the C-rate from the battery capacity and the current, you simply divide the battery capacity by the current. And make sure that the units are correct. So if you use milliamp hours, use milliamps. And if you use amp hours, use amps. To calculate the current from the C-rate, you just have to flip around the equation and multiply the battery capacity by the C-rate, and then you get the current in milliamps or amps. When I was first learning about C-rate, I was a little bit confused as far as where you got the value for battery capacity. So I wanna speak a little bit about that right now. The battery capacity is dependent on the cell design. For example, the capacity of lithium ion batteries used for electric vehicles typically comes from the cathode. This is because the cathode stores the chemical energy in the form of lithium inside the battery. The year is 2021 right now, and in the market, most electric vehicles use an NCM622 cathode. This means that this is a nickel-rich cathode with 60% nickel, 20% cobalt, and 20% manganese. I just looked it up online and found that the NCM622 powder from Targray has a capacity of about 176 milliamp hours per gram. Now let's say we use that powder to make our cathodes and we used five grams of it in total. This means that the battery capacity is 176 milliamp hours per gram times five grams of the material that we're using, which equals 880 milliamp hours. Our battery capacity is 880 milliamp hours. Now I know the battery capacity and I know I want to charge this battery in half an hour or at 2C. Now let's calculate how much current we need to apply. We take the 880 milliamp hours times 2C, which equals 1,760 milliamps or 1.76 amps. Now, if we wanted to take 100 hours to charge the same battery, so that's a rate of C over 100, we would need to take the 880 times one over 100, which equals 8.8 .8 milliamps. It's not too complicated, right? I hope this description makes it a little easier to understand C rate and why it matters. And I have a question for you. So C, as in C rate, <laughs> I'm curious why it's a C. Does that stand for charge, current, or capacity? I think it's capacity because one C would mean you charge it like one hour to charge the capacity. So it's like one hour to capacity. But if you know if it's different than that, comment below because I'm curious and I couldn't find this information online. So now it's time for the bonus. So for this bonus, I actually programmed a Python calculator to calculate C-rate. So look in the description below and you can find a link to that Python program. And if you've never used Python before, take this as an opportunity to learn about how to use Python. It's a really simple program. Thanks for watching and don't forget to like this video if you liked it and subscribe to Across the Nanoverse so that you can have notifications. I also set up a coffee account so if you like this and would like to support this channel and see more, coffee allows you to make a one-time donation of just about the price of a coffee though I may use it for hot decaf tea. Actually, what I'll probably use it for is to upgrade my video editing software. I really appreciate all of you who reach out to me on Instagram or Twitter or even LinkedIn to say hi. It always cheers me up and makes my day to know that there's other electrochemist enthusiasts around the world. I hope you have a wonderful rest of your day and I'll talk to you soon.